Hi, this is Erin Marsh. This gentle yoga sequence uh, will focus on embracing change, which in the yoga world is centered in your second chakra. If you're not into chakras, what that means physically is we're gonna be working on the hips, lower back, um, and lower core especially. We'll get everything as well, but we'll really be focusing on that. And um, my theory is that if we can practice things like embracing change and going with the flow on the mat, then we'll be better able to do so in the real world. I hope you enjoy this gentle flow. Go ahead and lay down. We'll start on our backs. Straight or bent and bring the hands to the lower belly. I like to rest my elbows on the ground and just let my hands rest on my belly. And then we're going to breathe in deeply into that second chakra or the lower belly. So inhaling fully, feeling the hands lift up, exhaling, engaging the core slightly as you pull the belly button back toward the floor. Inhale, lift. Exhale, activate, gently pulling belly button to floor. A few more like this. As you move through the breath, trying to relax the body, noticing where you're holding tension, noticing what's talking to you this morning, and then we'll do this self-evaluation again at the end just to see how much better we feel after moving and stretching. And then from here, releasing the hands down to the ground, bending the legs, hip distance apart, feet parallel. Roll the shoulders under a little bit so they're nice and close to the side body. Inhale, press into the feet, lift the hips up. Exhale, lower. Moving with your breath. If you have a block, you can place it between the thighs, gently squeezing, activating that lower core. If you don't have a block, just make sure to keep the hips, or sorry, the knees hip distance apart. A few more, working on resetting the pelvis, strengthening the legs, and flowing to work on mobility. Two more here. And then the next time you're at the top, no rush to get there, hold there. Pressing evenly into the feet, breathing fully, pressing into the forearms and the shoulders, gently squeezing that block between the legs. And then exhale, lower all the way down. Remove the block just for a second, hug the knees into the chest. Deep breaths here. Then from here, releasing the feet to the ground, bringing them to the edges of the mat so they're wider than hip distance. Deep breath in. Exhale, both knees over to the right, feet stay wide. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left. Moving with your breath. You could add some neck turns, looking the same way as the knees or the opposite way from the knees. Just adding movement to that neck as well. We're gonna be working on the hips, well, mainly the second chakra, which is the hips, lower back, pelvis, and that focuses on change. So by working on that area can help us embrace change which I don't know about you guys, but with everything reopening and people going back to work, I'm having a little bit of a tough time with the transition. So I thought this would be a fitting class. All right, then from here, making our way to center, bringing the feet back hip distance apart. If you have a block, slide it under the sacrum lowest height. If you don't have one, you don't need it. You could do the same thing from the floor. 
So if you're on the block, make sure you're nice and stable so you don't feel like you're gonna fall off. Lift up the right leg and then nice, slow hip circles. So the knee goes in circles here. And if this is your first time doing these with the block, you'll notice it's more challenging. You have to engage the left leg. You can really feel the hips rocking on the block. So it forces you to engage the core to prevent the pelvis from rocking. Reverse the circle. And then meeting in center, extending the legs straight up, foot flexed. Hamstrings might be tight, so if you're at a diagonal, that's fine. Exhale, lower the legs so it's straight in line with the hip. Point the toes, inhale straight up. Flex, lower, inhale up. Two more like this, consciously moving with the breath. And then the next time the leg lowers, go ahead and release it all the way to the floor. You should feel a nice stretch through the hip flexor, the psoas, and play with that right foot. Try pointing it, see how that feels. Then try flexing it. Point and turn out like a ballerina. Point and turn in like your pigeon toad. And then find the best stretch on your body and hold there. leg is relaxed here and hip circles on this side. Slow controlled circles. Notice the difference between the right and the left side. For me, even though my left leg is more open, it's a little more challenging for me to do this in a controlled manner. Reverse the circle. And then meet in center, extend the leg, foot flexed. Exhale, lower so it's in line with the hip. Point the toes, inhale, lift. Flex, exhale, lower. Three more. Then the next time the leg is lowered, release it all the way to the floor. Flex it, feel the stretch, point it, turn it out like a ballerina, pigeon toe, and then pick your best stretch. It might be different on this side, it might be the same. Keep that core slightly activated to protect the lower spine. And bending the left leg, removing the block, releasing the back to the floor, feet together, knees together. And then we're gonna inhale, open up the legs into butterfly. Exhale, squeeze, and then squeeze the thighs and knees together to feel that activation. Inhale, open. Exhale, squeeze. Three more slow, mindful movements with the breath. That's our last one. And then let's go ahead and open again. Option to stay right here, or you can lift the hips into a low bridge. So active stretching. We feel the stretch in the inner thighs, but we're using the muscles of the hips.
and lower on down. Hugging the knees into the chest, holding onto the back of the thighs. Begin to rock front to back. These could be teeny tiny movements or larger ones, your choice. Take about six rocks on that spine and then either rock up or press up to seated. And then meet an easy pose. If you have the block, you could sit on it. You do not need to though, your choice. And then from here, let's inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, lean to one side, oh, front to other side. I think as often as I do this one, it wouldn't be so hurt so good every time I do it. Return to that nice, slow breath. Good. Reverse your circle. circle, making our way to center. Sitting up nice and tall again. Inhale, open up through the chest, looking forward, elbows back. Exhale, roll your sit bones on the block or the floor, look down at the legs. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl. Seated cat and cow. As we're moving through this, really focus on your cat, trying to pull everything toward the spine, the core, the belly, curling through that lower back. Last one. And then coming up right, Removing the block, you can place it to the side. Moving to all fours, joints stacked, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, moving into a nice slow cat and cow here. Noticing how it feels different. And on this one, don't look up in the cow. Keep looking down at the ground, just to be careful of the cervical spine. If your block is right there, you can place it between the thighs, Gently squeezing, that'll help keep the lower back nice and open as we move through these. Last one. If you have the block, go ahead and move it to the sacrum. And this is just feedback. We all tend to open up through the hips when we start to do this next one. So extend the right leg straight back, find your stability, and then exhale, pull the knee in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, pull it in. Three more like that. This is our last one. And then go ahead and extend it straight back, bend the leg, and try to tap on the ceiling without moving the block. So you feel a nice stretch in the hip flexor. You feel strength in the hamstring and glute. And we're retraining the body how to move without always shifting through the pelvis. Release the right foot down to the ground and just press into the ball of the foot. Bend the right knee in, same thing on the left side. Left leg goes straight back, find your balance, toes pointing down. Exhale, pull the knee in next to the other knee without touching the ground. 
Inhale, extend. Exhale, pull in. Feel this in the back of the legs, the hips, the core. Last one. Then left leg goes straight back, bend. Try to tap on the ceiling without knocking off the block. Extend the left leg again, place the ball of the foot down and press into the ball of the foot and the toes, stretching the foot, calf, toes. Bring that left knee back in, remove the block, knees wide, big toes together, pressing back to child pose. Return to the deep belly breath, focusing on that spot beneath the navel. Shifting that up to all fours again, bringing the knees back hip distance. We're going to move into hip circles. So lean the hips to the right, back, left, neutral. So nice, slow hip circles. If you'd like, you can move the hands forward a little, little drop the hips. It just depends. Sometimes that feels really good on me. Other times my lower back's like, nope, I don't like that. So really pay attention to how your body feels in every pose, adjusting as you need to. Reverse your circle. And then medium and center, knees wide again, big toes together, pressing back. But this time, walking the hands over to the right side of the mat, you can place one hand on top of the other, reaching the left hip back and the hands off to the right. So you feel a nice stretch through the whole left side of the body. Back to center and then over to the left. to center, back up to all fours, turn the toes under, shift on up to down dog. Then introduce whatever movement feels good here. Then looking between the hands, walking the feet forward to forward fold. Inhaling the arms up. Exhale and folding again. From here, we're going to step the right leg back, drop the knee to kneeling lunge. And then we're just going to flow from hamstring stretch to kneeling lunge. And this is where the block can come in handy as well, just to give you some height. Making sure we're warm before we deeply stretch. This also helps us work on mobility. Then the next time you're kneeling lunge, go ahead and walk the hands up to the thigh. From here, inhale the arms up. And on the exhalation, we're going to bring the right arm forward, left arm back, opening it up into a twist. This will still work on your balance. Another option would be the right hand to the left thigh, 
left hand to the lower back. So pick which one feels best. Unwind to center. Option to use your black as you move into hamstring stretch. So toes starting up, hips reach back, spine is long here. And now point the left toes and pigeon, ooh, pigeon toe them. You'll feel this in that IT band. Back to center. Coming up to the kneeling, bringing both hands to the inside of the foot for a lizard variation. You can sink the hips or you can turn the right toes under. Option to lift up the right knee, that's pretty intense though. Slowly coming out of this, swinging the left leg back. So you're back to kneeling. And then we're gonna come all the way up to kneeling. Left leg goes out to the side. Left hand comes to the left leg. Right arm comes overhead gate pose. Exhale, right hand down, left arm overhead, extended kneeling side plank. Inhale up and over to gate pose. Make sure those glutes are on, the arms and legs are strong and dynamic. And then the next time we're in gate pose, let's hold there, turning the chest up toward the ceiling a little bit. Bring the right hand to the right ear and try to lengthen through both sides of the body. Right arm extends back up, right hand comes back to the floor, left arm up. Option to lift the left leg, and if you can, reach for the left foot, holding the heel to the butt, stretching out that thigh. Also get that left shoulder. Then left foot releases to the ground, press into the left foot so you feel that nice stretch along the whole left side of the body. Left arm overhead, and then a couple of slow arm circles here. Reverse the circle. And meeting upright. Pull your torso upright, bring the left leg in, and then come back to all fours. From here, let's swing the right leg forward, and then we're gonna move into that flowing kneeling lunge to hamstring stretch. Option to use the black or blocks. Try to keep the back long. The core is active here. Meeting in our kneeling lunge, walking the hands up to the right thigh, finding your stability. Inhale the arms up, exhale left arm forward, right arm back, opening into a twist. Option to stay exactly like this, or you can bring the left hand to the outside of the right thigh and the right hand to the lower back. Make sure that left glute is on. We'll get a deeper stretch in the left hip flexor. Unwinding to center and bringing the hands to the floor or the blocks. Right toes turn up, core active, spine long, breathe. And pointing the right toes and pigeon toe. It's 
the hurt so good one. Back to center. Walk the hands forward, bring them to the inside of the right foot for lizard. Option to stay exactly as you are, or you can turn the left toes under, or you can lift the left knee. Whichever stretch feels the best for you, but make sure you can keep the shoulders relaxed, whatever option you choose. Coming out of this a little bit, so you can swing the right leg back to all fours, readjust so the hands are underneath the shoulders. Come all the way up to kneeling. Then right leg kicks out to the side. Right hand to the right leg. Inhale the left arm overhead. Gate pose. Deep breath in. Exhale, left hand comes to the floor, right arm overhead, extended kneeling side plank. And then on the next breath, coming on up again. Warming up the obliques, using our legs for balance as we're also stretching. Then the next time you're in gate pose, let's hold there. Find the length through both sides. Bring the left hand to the left ear. Turn the chest up a little bit and breathe. Exhale, left hand to the ground. Right arm up. Option to stay right here, or you can lift the right leg, bend the leg, find the ankle or the foot, and then pull that heel to the butt so you feel a nice stretch through the right thigh. You're also getting that right shoulder. Releasing the right foot back down to the ground, press into the right foot, especially that outside edge. Right arm comes up and overhead. Three slow arm circles. Doesn't matter which way you start because we'll switch. Then reverse your circle. And then bring the right hand back down to the floor, turn into all fours, press back to child's pose. Gently coming up, turning the toes under, shifting on up to down dog. Two deep breaths here. Then walking the feet forward between the hands. Inhale all the way up to standing. Exhaling the hands through heart center. Then step your feet wide, so you're facing the iPad, phone, whatever you are. Wide PA position. Arms up to five-pointed star. And then we're gonna exhale into our squat, swoop the arms down, inhale up. Sunflowers. Keep that core active. Last one. And then up, hands through heart center. Turn the left toes to the side of the mat. The right toes toward the front or the back. Extend the arms, bend the right leg, warrior two. Gaze over the right middle finger. Press into the feet. Think about opening up through the hips. That right knee is going toward the right toes. Then straightening the right leg, bringing the hands to the hips. 
Option to narrow the stance a little bit. Hips reach back, torso reaches to the right leg, slide the right hand down, inhale the left arm up, triangle. You can look up at the left hand, down at the right foot, pulling the hips under, core is on. Then from here, just bend the right leg, bring the right elbow to the right thigh, and then left arm overhead, extended side angle. Inhaling all the way up, right, bringing the hands to the hips, turning the feet so they're parallel to one another. And nice, slow side lunges. Getting into the outer hips, stretching the inner thigh. And then meeting in center. Right toes stay where they are. Left toes turn to the back or the top of the mat. Left leg bends, arms extend, warrior two. Left knee moving toward the left toes, pressing into the outer edge of the right foot, opening up through the hips, lifting up through the pelvic floor. And bringing the hands to the hips, left leg straightens, option to narrow the stance. Hips reach back, torso reaches to the left leg, slide the left hand down, inhale the right arm up. Find your drishti up at the right hand or down at the left toes. Then bending that left leg, sliding the left elbow to the left thigh, right arm overhead, extended side angle. Still trying to open up through those hips as much as possible. And inhaling all the way up, turning our feet back to our wide plie position, arms up for moon flower. Exhale into the squat, pull the elbows in. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, squat. Three more. This will be our last one. Then let's hold goddess pose for two deep breaths. Tucking the tailbone. And slowly straightening the legs, turning the feet parallel to one another or slightly pigeon toed. Walking the hands behind the back so you can open up through the chest. Deep breath in. Exhale, hinge, legs bent and then relax the head. Release the hands to the floor. And then from here, bending the legs, coming to kneeling, and then shifting the hips to come to seated. Bringing the soles of the feet together for butterfly. Sitting up nice and tall. And then introduce some gentle movement before we hinge. Feel the difference between the right and the left here. For most of us, one side's gonna feel tighter or stickier. Then holding static, lengthening through the spine with the inhalation. Exhale, press the chest forward, head is in line with the rest of the spine. Core is active to protect that lower back and breathe.
slowly coming up, extending the legs straight ahead, and then opening for straddle. Feet flexed, legs active, kneecaps lifted, lengthen through the spine, deep breath in. Exhale, slide the hand to one side, stretching through the other side. And inhale up and over to the other side. So really rooting down through the sit bones here so that we feel the length through the side. As you go to one leg, the other hip will want to lift up. So engage that core to press them down. Center, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, press the chest forward. You can walk the hands wherever feels comfortable. If your block is nearby, you could place it underneath the forehead. Keep those legs active if possible. slowly coming up. Sliding the feet together. From here, let's bend the right leg. Open it up to the side. Janu Shishasana A. Left foot flex. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hinge. Walking the hands wherever feels good. coming up. Let's slide the right ankle to the left thigh, hands behind. If you feel the stretch, you can stay there. Otherwise, you can bend the left leg. Then press the chest forward and breathe. From here, straighten the left leg a little bit or a lot. Come down to your forearms. Legs are still the shape they are. And then all the way to the back. Use the right hand to gently press the right leg away as you root down through the sit bones and try to open up through the hips. So active stretching here. Try to pull the legs apart without actually pulling them apart. option to stay here or you can thread the hands through the back of the left leg and breathe. Keeping our legs like this, but releasing the left foot to the ground. We're just going to slide the right leg over. So we're more in an eagle legs or ladylike position. So choice is here. If you feel the stretch, stay here. Otherwise, lift the legs up, reach for each ankle. So right hand to left ankle, left hand to right ankle. And relax down. Oh, yeah. So this is cow face pose, but reclining. It's safer for our knees this way, and we get possibly a deeper stretch even. Root down through that lower back, so try not to let the hips lift up. Press them down. Then release the legs, unwind them. Hold on to the back of the thighs. 
and you can rock or press up to seated. The legs straight in front, bend the left leg, lock the knee, drop the leg out to the side. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hinge at the hips so the back stays as straight as you can. And then once you get to your, that's as far as I can go spot, relax the head and shoulders. And form is important here because the more we fold, the more we can place stress on our spine. So if we're always doing one of these, like I can grab my foot, I can bring my head down, but look how my back curls. This is safer for the long run. And coming on up, bringing the left ankle to the right thigh, option to stay right there, or you can bring your hands behind you and bend the right leg. And then lengthen through the spine. Straighten the right leg a little bit. Come down to the forearms and then lay down. Using the left hand to gently press the left knee away, actively pull the legs apart. You should feel the lower core engage. Option to stay here or thread the hands behind the right thigh, pull the legs in. Shoulders relaxed, muscles of the face relaxed. If you feel your legs are going to the left or the right, try to bring them right in the center. Keeping our legs like this, but releasing the right foot to the ground, slide the left leg over for eagle legs. Option to stay right here, you can lift the legs Reaching for the right ankle with the left hand, left ankle with the right hand, and then relax down. Notice how different the sides feel. I mean, maybe you're perfectly equal, but for me, it feels like a completely different pose from one side to the next. Releasing the legs, unwinding them, reaching for your strap if you have one. If you don't, you can hold on to the back of the right thigh. Everyone else, right leg extends, foot in the strap, and then straightening the left leg. So the benefit of the strap is that we can keep our upper body relaxed while still getting a deep stretch in the right leg. Try to press the right hip on the ground, so try not to let it lift off the ground. And from here, this is one of my favorite stretches, bring the foot across the body just an inch, so right hip is still on the ground, and then pigeon toe, woo, that right foot. It's another IT band stretch. Breathe. You don't have to go very far with the right leg to feel the stretch. Bring the foot back to neutral. If the strap's not in the left hand, bring it in the left hand. Right shoulder glue to the ground and then bring the leg across the body to the left. Turn the head to look at the right hand. If you don't have a strap here, bend the right leg and just twist it. You'll get an almost identical stretch. Back to center, bend the right leg. So you can hold on to the strap this way or you can release the strap and hold on to the shin. Yogi's choice. The 
Then bring this left hand to the left hip and use the right hand to guide the knee out to the right. So really opening up through the hips. Don't worry how far the right knee is going. Try to open up through the hips as much as possible. Left leg is active here. Back to center and then releasing the right foot to the ground, reaching for your strap or the back of the left thigh. Left leg extends straight up. And just as a reminder, you could do this if you don't have a strap. Right leg extends, make that right leg active so you get that hip flexor stretch in the right leg. Shoulders relaxed and breathe. And then when I say this in my yoga videos all the time and in class, but our mat is like our mini world. And what we practice here can help translate into the real world. So if we move and change things up on the mat, hopefully it'll be a little easier to change things up in the real world. Then taking both sides of the strap in the right hand, bring the leg to the right just an inch and then pitch into it. Bring the foot back to neutral, and then across the body. If you're running into a wall like I am, you can bend the right leg, or if you don't have a strap, you can bend the leg. Try to keep that left shoulder on the floor if possible. Back to center. Pulling the knee into the chest using the strap or not. Right hand to right hip. Glue that right hip down as you use the left hand to open up through the left hip. Active stretching here. Pressing the lower back into the ground. Right leg is active. Core is on. Back to center, extending the left leg. Inhaling the arms up, full body stretch. And exhaling the hands up and down. We're gonna move into supported fish with the block. So if you have the block, it'll go between the shoulder blades. If you don't, W underneath the hands, prop yourselves up by the forearm and back here. If you're using the block, find that spot where you feel supported and the back and the chest feel open. If you're comfortable, you can then bring the legs to butterfly. Deep breaths here. Return to that deep belly breath, breathing into that spot beneath the navel. Gently bringing the knees together, coming up, removing the block or your hands. And then from here, lifting the feet off the ground. If you can, try to hook the shins with the right arm, left arm out to a T. And then we're gonna guide the legs over to the right. And you can keep holding on to the legs or slide the arm out and just gently hold on to the left leg with the right hand looking to the left or the right, and then sinking into this, breathing deeply. And 
Inhaling to center. Wrapping the left arm in front of the shins. Right arm on the floor and guide the legs over to the left. Holding here or sliding the left arm out. Looking the opposite direction. To center. And then from here, extending the legs, bringing the hands to the lower belly again. Deep breath in, feeling the hands lift up, side out. Another leg that deep breath in, fill up the belly, side out. And let's take three rounds of exhalation longer than the inhalation. So count how long it takes to inhale. Try to exhale two counts or three counts longer. So inhale two, three, four, five. Exhale two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two more at your own pace. And allowing your natural breathing pattern to take over, no longer controlling the breath, simply relaxing. I'm going to end with this quote and then allow you guys to breathe for a couple minutes. For those of us who choose to stay immersed in the world, loving and living fully without becoming attached is not an easy thing. When we experience the completeness of being loved, the satisfaction of a superb meal, the acknowledgement of work well done, we can easily want to hold on to these moments and never let them go. It is easy to want the same satisfaction and begin to demand the same fulfillment from these things again and again. But it is the nature of things to change. And by failing to let them change or move on, they begin to disappoint us and our attempts to hold on begin to make us stale and discontent. What we try to possess, possesses us. What if we could trust life like we trust the breath? What if we could take in all the nourishments of the moment and then let it go fully, trusting that more nourishment will come? Holding on to those thoughts, then letting them go. Let's take two minutes to breathe deeply.
beginning to wiggle the fingers and the toes, circling the wrists and the ankles, taking a deep breath in and stretching the arms overhead, full body, gentle stretch. And then exhale, roll on to the right side. Gently pressing on up to seated. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. I hope you enjoy the rest of the beautiful day. I'm so glad the sun is finally here. Namaste.